This winch is the winch that I built this uh, platform for to be able to go into the, the trailer that I, I basically rebuilt the front end of the winch setup and whatnot. And this winch is not working correctly. So um, we're going to take a look at, start with taking a look at the solenoids and see if those are good. And then we'll go from there. So, and honestly, actually, while I have it out, let's, let's go ahead and hook it up and just kind of show you what's going on. All right, so the battery is hooked up. And when we go to winch out or in, all you hear is clicking. And that is the solenoids clicking in here. And more than likely, there is one that's bad. Maybe even two, maybe all four. So we're going to open it up real quick and see if we can't figure out what's going on. All right, so these four are the solenoids. And a solenoid basically looks like this. When the coil is energized, it allows power to flow through it. And all a winch really does is allow the line to go out or allow the line to come back in. And so it has four solenoids, two for coming in and two for going out. And the reason they do it like that is so that th it, there is redundancy. Meaning, if one of the out cylinders fails, the winch doesn't automatically just keep letting line out. It stops it. It fails the whole unit and stops that part of it from working. And if one of the winch in solenoid fails, it stops that part as well. And the point is, it's a safety mechanism, essentially to avoid... Because if you're winching something onto a trailer, you want it to stop. You'd rather have it fail and not work at all than have it continue to pull something, you know, like a, a car or a truck or a machine further onto the trailer, even into the vehicle towing or whatever, and causing a potential dangerous situation, then you'd rather have it working properly. So the redundant system is essentially set up to eliminate the factor of, you know, Something going wrong. The way we're going to test these is we're going to take 12 volt power, we're going to energize the solenoid, and then basically test across it to see the ohm reading. And that's where the multimeter comes in. And so we want to see very, very low ohms. So the multimeter is set to ohms. Currently, I have it in auto range. So I'm actually going to stick it there. And so when you touch, touch the two together on ohms, you want to see almost nothing. Very little. When I energize the solenoid, you're going to hear a click. And that is what's, what happens when you energize a solenoid. And it doesn't matter which is black and which is not. So I've got power across that. Then we take the two leads and we touch the other two con contacts. And if you look at the multimeter, it says zero or very, very little. So that, that is a good solenoid. So now we're going to take it off and we're going to go to the next one. Perfect. Perfect. So if I put it back on auto range, you'll see it kind of jumps around like crazy, but it's got way too many ohms. 
Essentially, that is a bad solenoid. So, we're going to replace it with a good one. We're going to use copper in, I see, is just like what was used previous on this. Now that we got the new solenoid installed, let's test them again and make sure that we got everything figured out. Perfect. All right, well, they all look good. So let's hook the battery up directly to it and see if it works. All right, here we go. Hmm. Well, I think there's something else going on here because this solenoid pack is good now. We know that. Winch out and so solenoids are getting power and they're working. So next we need to check the motor and see if it's maybe got an issue where it's not getting power. So this is called a sun gear. Basically have an outer gear, and then you got all these interplanetary gears. And 
And as the motor turns, it turns all those gears, reducing it down to this shaft. And this shaft is what fits. And that shaft fits into here, into these splines. So I'm labeling each one of these so that I know exactly where they go. There's the motor. So the head of this bolt here broke off. I'm gonna drill into the bolt, to try and loosen up because it's seized around it. So try and make it easier for me to get in there. Bingo! As you can see, I had to drill into the bolt to get through all this corrosion. There was corrosion all over it, right on the inside of that, that end cap that was keeping it from coming off. And so by drilling into it, I was able to break the seal of that corrosion enough to get into it. So definitely shouldn't be like that at all. I'm going to have to replace both of these bolts. So this one, the end broke off. This one I drilled into it is what it is. So 
So these are the brushes. They're basically what contact around this ring here. And they are a wear, wear item. These brushes actually look really good. Um, it's a little dirty in here, and so, I mean, just a little bit. Look at my hands. So, I'm going to clean this. I'm going to clean this. I don't see any major red flags. So, yeah. Other than being really dirty in here, there is some rust around each one of these. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to clean everything up and go from there. So, if you listen to this bearing, you can tell that it's bad. Should be smooth. But, it's kind of grinding in there. So, I'm going to replace that bearing. There it is without the bearing. So it should be simple enough to press a new one on. Brand new bearing. Custom built, press setup, bearing. Bearing on, beautifully pressed on. Smooth. Inside the actual motor case here, you can see there's surface rust kind of around each one of those windings. So I'm just going to go in there real gently with a small wire brush there and just kind of clean that up. Maybe that was making it so it wasn't quite getting connection and the power wasn't running through the motor properly. I don't exactly know, but I have heard that if these things sit outside for long periods of time, water getting into the, or just being dirty or water getting into them can cause a lot of problems and potentially cause the motor to not work. So I'll clean that up.
bolts holding this cover onto the winch were so corroded not only did I have to drill the other one out but this one here it essentially snapped off right there luckily I don't have to even mess with trying to get that out I can just use these two bolt holes instead of these two they're offset slightly so the motor will be just slightly turned which won't really affect anything it's looking at it it is it absolutely has no bearing on the way this thing will run. So before I go any further, I ran a tap through this one. I'm going to run a tap through this one real quick. Alright, those two will work. All right, brand new bearing. Perfect. Well, everything in here looks great on this side.
There's a spring in there that has to get into a certain exact hole. That little hole you can see right above my finger. You can see the spring is in it. And so it needs to be in it. We got those back in, much cleaner than they were. Hopefully that helps. So these are the brushes and they're uh, essentially spring loaded. And all four of these ride on this copper section of this motor here. And you, when you pull them off, a lot of times you, there's just no way to get them. It's very difficult to get them all pulled back so you can get this back on. Because the bearing actually sits right in this, this small section here and the brushes have to ride there. Well, I was looking at this and there are four small holes here and I found some trim nails. The trim nails drop perfectly in there and hold the brush out of the way enough to essentially put it back together. So if I pull this one back, the nail in there, and then it stays. That's all four of them. And then boom, they're out of the way and we can install it and then pull the nails out. Nice and smooth. Put it back together and see what happens. Right. So I got to digging through one of my boxes and I found two bolts that are the right length. I'm going to go wire wheel these up, clean them a little bit, and then we'll give them a try. All right, let's see if this baby works. All right, drum roll. Yeah, baby. Sweet. 
All right. Fixed. Now let's finish it up, wipe it down, and put it back to work. If you've been watching the channel for long, you saw on this trailer where I, I built this winch mount. I'll show you real quick how it works. So there's a hand crank winch that's always on here, ready to use. And then there's a two inch hitch receiver for a two inch hitch that I basically mounted this winch onto. and gives me a place to mount the electric winch when I want it. Just like that.
Yeah, I think I'm gonna do that at home. Well, I guess this strap didn't like being yanked on. Clearly it broke. Talk about a bad to the bone garage wall hanger slash decoration right there. The extra grill from the parts machine. This rototiller, and then right below it is a snow blade, and they both go to that John Deere 318 that I also got at the same place as Old Red. So I was finally able to get the snow blade and the rototiller picked up and back here to the shop. So let's get them unloaded. So this is one of the extra track roller frames from the parts machine that was already disassembled. 
And this particular one actually has the rock guards. So the rock guards are basically down below along the bottoms of the rollers, right there. Those are rock guards. And there's one on each side. And I don't know if the 955 originally had them or not, but I've seen a lot of the D4s had them. And the question for you guys out there is, are those a good idea on a track loader or is there a higher chance of things getting kind of bound up between the rock guard and the inner the rollers on the bottom i only have one set of them anyway and it's for this this side of the track not saying i'm going to try and find some other ones but i'm just curious um, if they're a good idea or are they a bad idea so yeah let me know your thoughts but i thought it was interesting that this this roller frame actually has those guards when all the the other three of them that I have don't.